Hey everybody, what's up? Circus here coming at you with this week's power rankings and it's going to be a fun one, an interesting one because there was a huge shakeup. The the numbers are going to be a little skewed because we have numbers before the ban list, we have numbers after the ban list, so it's going yep. to be just a mess and that's why Kim is here cuz he yep, loves we messes. Will, uh... Yeah, we will break it all down for you. Could you clarify uh, where, where, uh, what points are from where and everything? So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, if you guys are new to the video series, what we do here is we track decks as they're played in tournaments throughout the week, and then we assign them points based on how they finish, and then we rank them. Um, so, if a deck gets a first place finish, it gets six points. A second place finish is four points. A top four is two points, and a top eight is a single point. Now, the tournaments that we track need to be consistent so that we can compare the results. Uh, so they need to have rounds of Swiss into a top cut. They got to have a single deck format with a seven card side deck where you can side in a skill. Um, so the the tournaments that met that criteria this week, there were ten of them. Mm. Seven battle phase um, tournaments, and then the meta weekly Sunday, the meta weekly, and the meta weekly Friday. Damage step is in there, so that was our big uh, entry fee tournament, and it went off very well. So thank you to everybody for helping out with that. Yep. I hope you enjoyed it. So, all right, let's get into this thing. You got any all idea, right. Kamel? What do you think? There's a, there's actually first, a lot. I, I had to break it up into two slides here. So we'll do the top. I think it's 15 first. <laughs> yeah. First one of the new power rankings. I have to say, I did see a lot of Desperado. I think of that it has to be at least at the top of representation. I don't know how, how far I got it. All right, let's check it out. And it is Desperado, but look at number Oof. two. Look at oh, number two. Oh, no. Say it isn't <laughs> so. It's not gone yet. Not yet. Desperado in the lead with 27 points. Not far behind. Sheer Nui with 21 points. Yes, 21 points. points. Uh, but we'll, we'll break Black that Man. down. We'll break that down. Blue Eyes, Cyber Dragons, and Weather Painters. So this, and yeah, so this this is this is a, the top fifteen. There's thirteen more decks. So hang on. Oh <laughs> there were so many decks that um uh, we have more played. Yeah, there's thirteen oh more my. decks. Yeah, that's oh what I mean. God. So hang on. And here's the second uh list of numbers. But look at this. Twenty eight decks making the top uh cut or top eight in tournaments this week. So yeah, a lot and of variety. We could even look like Closer at the bottom of this list, I I remember some of these matches from Battle Phase Rising Sun and Battle Phase mm -hmm. Pop Up Tuesday. Like the the amount of playable decks is a lot wider now. I feel so. Right, are definitely a lot. Twenty eight different lot decks this week scored points. Yeah, so that's crazy. Um, so yeah, I'll put the 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 winning numbers up back again. Um. But yeah, so the meta is definitely shaking up a little bit. So, let's so I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to waste people's time. I know they want to yeah, know. Let's break it down. Desperado yeah. at first place, twenty-seven points. Now, why is Desperado at the top? Well, if you remember when Desperado was at its heyday, it was destroying everything, and it was one of the best decks, decks if not the best. But then, Invoked came out. And the most popular engine invoked uh, Neos w with the Kakaitis, the Neos, and then the Element Sabers came out. And the use of Kakaitis, it's a card that Desperado has no out to. None of the no cards way to get the around deck, it. Yeah. No way, no cards in the deck can beat it. They all target yeah. or destroy, so it cannot beat that card. And it so, just wasn't big enough to attack over it either. Exactly. Now, yeah. Desperado, the thing about it is that it does everything else so much better than any other deck in the game. No other deck in the game can destroy as well as Desperado does. No deck in the game can draw cards as well as Desperado can. And it's great. You have Blast Spider, it can, just, it can destroy. Twin Barrel Dragon can destroy. Gets guaranteed destruction with the coin. Desperado Barrel Dragon gets a one in three chance of destroy minimum one or zero but a, a very good chance and now the people are playing uh super buddy team which yep. allows you to draw that which allows you to summon desperado from having another machine like machina fortress machina fortress also another very powerful card with a destruction effect it lets you discard cards from your opponent's hand this deck is very consistent right now and it just it does what it does very well, and then you can get lucky and do more. So I feel like that is why it is succeeding so much right now. Look at that top thirty-two conversion rate, almost fifty yeah, percent. Yeah, fifty, almost fifty percent, and that is just because 
out of all the other decks that we see right now, all of them, they lack kind of follow-up after, you know, their first thing gets negated. If you could think of any of the decks that people were trying this week, if you're able to start on, like, Misjudge and negate their combo starter, they don't really have a play after that. And if you're playing, if you have any Desperado up, anything to clear their back row, then you're set. You can win most matches off of just going first, having Misjudge literally winning from the coin flip. <laughs> I don't know why. My prediction is the next mini box is going to come out. It's going to have something really good in it, and it's going to destroy Desperado. Now, I, I don't know why. I, I just have that feeling. Like Everybody's like, Desperado's back, baby, for a week, and then it's just going to get destroyed. Well, well you know, that, that is typically what happens to the best decks, and Desperado, that can be the case. Why? Well, because Desperado is a machine deck, guys, and a machine deck is always a uh, victim to system down, and Desperado specifically is a machine deck that has no outs to all of their playable cards being banished. Not only can none of them be summoned back from the grave using Machida Fortress, none of them can be used for discard fodder. That card can't be special summoned from the grave, but also your super team buddy force is irrelevant because you can't bring things back from the grave either if everything is banished so system down is really a death sentence for this card in tournaments although this did do pretty well albeit in the first half i believe of tournaments of this week of with the new ban list specifically yeah, you, if you look at the finishes they start to taper off obviously it won meta freakly uh the meta weekly and the meta freakly friday so that's wednesday and friday but then you get into damage stuff and it, it got a top four so not bad um, but it's got a lot of top eights if you look, which isn't mm -hmm. bad either. But if you're talking about being consistent and being the best deck for long term, we'll we'll see. Yeah, so but there was a lot of uh, side decks were playing three system downs. A lot of side decks. So yeah, and that is something. Oh, so to talk about that really quickly, one of the decks that actually won this week was Chris Rons. Uh, I don't think we're going to be talking about it this week, but Chris Rons did win a tournament. So yeah. At the, early, at the beginning of the tournaments this week, there was a lot of reason to play System Down, mm -hmm. you know, against against uh, in your side deck to come up against this or Christron. So, Desperado, I would look, I would be careful. If you have the deck, play it, see how it does. But System Down, is this deck is going to be very heavily sided against in the coming weeks. But yeah. right now, it's still very strong. Another card that we're going to see a lot more of... Uh especially playing against this deck, which is in this guy's extra deck here, is the Black Ship of Corn, mm -hmm. Because it sends to the grave, it doesn't destroy. Yeah, so, it can uh, remove any of your level 4 Desperado targets for destruction. Right, so you don't get the summon off of it. So we saw that quite a bit in Damage Step yesterday. And a 14% conversion rate for the first week to the top 8 is pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. With, in a high, a lot of representation, so... Good to see a lot of people picking up that Desperado is going to be one of the best decks. All right. Uh, second place is going to be Shira Nui. This, is, I, this always happens, right, when there's a ban list. People, uh, they, they try to resuscitate the deck. It's like, you know, don't don't die on me, man. Don't die on me. You know, they're doing the CPR. They're giving it mouth to mouth. Don't die. I need you. Get um, up, soldier. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we saw here. Uh, this version, the guy tried to call it Zombie Synchro, but let's be honest, we all know yeah, what this is. So that was a meme, yeah, right? Uh, the, that morning we were calling it a Zombie Synchro Control. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's really funny. We look, three Gozuki, three Samurai Skull, and then three Shiranui cards, and the rest is traps. And this right. kind of pseudo archetype won three tournaments now uh you were saying that the first tournament on the week battle phase sunday was a uh it, it well, was not weekly sunday and battle phase sunday so those are two right. pre bandless terms so that's two, two pre bandless yep. so that is 12 points uh that have gone that went the way of the old bandless uh, so it should have they... nine post bandless points so it yeah. would be much farther down but we do the whole week but then you can kind of see the compare and contrast pre banless post banless the two tournaments that were held on sunday it won both <laughs> yeah. then post banless it still did all right Z zombie yeah, secret control this, this deck is very very uh it's it's annoying right in the finals of battle phase rising sun hellcat specifically 
sent a monster three back row, probably all three duels <laughs> in a row. And this deck allows it it succeeds more on your opponent not having Floodgate in Canada every single turn. Because right. a lot of the decks in this meta or in this format right now, they're not playing three Floodgate, three Canadia. They're maybe playing like I don't know, Noble Knights or Bujins or something like that. They're, they're playing so, so something mm -hmm. else. They're playing a lot of engine cards. So they're counting on you not having something to stop them every turn. And every turn, they're sending Plague Spread of Zombie. They're sending Solitaire. They're sending a level 2 tuner to get set up over time. And they're doing this with just one monster and letting their traps do the work for them. So after right. one or two turns, then you're like, what? Coral Dragon? So that's when they summon that guy. Right. And then it's Crab <laughs> Dragon, huh? What? <laughs> what, what the heck this is zombie synchro control right so i it it's kind of shiranui because i mean gozuki gazuki was shiranui and then samurai skull uh people that was always poor man's uh yeah. shiranui right so you, now you have both in there and then the back row that's just straight shiranui if i've ever seen it people I, do I, not I, see the coral dragon coming it it, right. it was terrible on thursday people were caught off guard so much because not the level sixes are really where the utility comes in for Shiranui, and this is now your most accessible thing without right. using a skill, a, a level skill. There's no really ne real need for you to. Oh my god! Start. I just There's saw no... his skill. I just saw his skill. Yeah, endless oh trap my hell. God. <laughs> That's no just need. disgusting. <laughs> There's no need for you to use a level duplication, level augmentation oh. to start on Sun Saga or Shogun Saga because. You can't really establish that early right. anymore. You're only going to have access to one monster per turn because you're not playing Squire anymore. So you just want traps and you want to send resources to the grave so you can do all your synchros in one turn. I'm surprised they don't have a treacherous trap hole in there then. You know, you use up your traps, <laughs> yeah. recycle hey, everything hey, back. Don't give them ideas for next week. They're going to do it next week. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I mean, look at all those flip downs he's playing two Canadian and two Floodgate. I'm surprised it's not three of each, but I guess he well, wanted fun, to have those. Fun fact, sir, they're going to call you out in the video. You can't play Treacherous Trap Hole because Sun Saga and Solitaire are limited to two as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God, right? Yeah. Could you imagine? They'll find a way to get it in there. Oh, now, anytime yeah. I think Ender's Trap Hell, I'm always thinking you can recycle your traps yeah. and play something disgusting like Treacherous Trap Hole. But yeah, thank God they can't play them, right? Mm -hmm. So Shiranui, definitely. If Now, if you were playing a Shiranui deck where you are not playing 3 Gozuki, do not even try it. You definitely need 3 Gozuki. You definitely need 3 Samurai Skull. Plague Spreader Zombie as well, a very powerful option. I would say all of the monsters in this deck, you need them in the quantities that are there. So you right. got to have three Gozuki to play this deck for sure. We'll have to wait and see if this deck continues to uh, perform. I, I want to see. Cause it, I think it will. There's no other. This is, the I think, the best control deck, man. Like, this deck is insane. You're going to see it today because you, you haven't casted a post list tournament, but this deck is ridiculous. Well, I kind of wonder if you've ever seen Game of Thrones. Remember Daenerys' first husband? He died, and then they, like, bring him yeah. back to life, and he's just kind of like a zombie. Is that where we're at right now uh, with this deck? Is yeah. It just a zo is it a zombie, or does it have life to it? It's a literal zombie deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to Blackwings, then, in third place. Hmm. Um, not getting any tournament wins, but just uh, performing right. solidly. Because if you look... And if I'm looking here, everything's post ban list. So there you go. And so Bush Bush God King is uh, did pick up the runner up for damage step. Now Black Wings is kind of what I call right now. It's a it's a vulture deck. It's kind of like picking on all the new <laughs> decks that people are playing, all the like crappy decks that people are playing. Right. Try it out. They can just get in list. there. Yeah. And B Black Wings is just absolutely cleaning them up. The new deck uh, is not new deck, I should say, but the way people are playing it is now very, very consistent. Karma uh, s uh, squeezing in Karma Cut because Black Wings do need to be able to remove those high value threats from the board, like Desperado, without destroying them. Right. Uh, so th that is going to be another thing, right? Uh, Karma that we talk yeah. talk about other decks. Karma Cut is very, very. Useful now, a deck like Black Wings that usually does not run any back row at all needs to be making use of Karma Cut because they need a non-destruction 
option, Desperado, the most played deck, thrives and uh, thrives, and then it uh, floats off of destruction. And that is something that Black Wings do mm-hmm. a lot. It's something they need to be able to not do. And that's what Carbo Cut does. That's what it's going to do for a lot of decks. Black Wings, though, being able to remove back row, change special summon very well. But Black Wings are very, very vulnerable, probably more than they've ever been in this meta. Would you see that uh, we're not going to be able to get to it because they're outside of the top five here, but you know who they lost to in damage step, don't you? Who did they lose to in damage Goki. They Black lost Wings to Goki. Lost to get- Goki actually OTK'd them with an econ take. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it, 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 was- it is insane <laughs> because Black Wings are so vulnerable if they don't have access to multiple Cosmic Cyclone in their opening hands and they go, and they, and they go second... We, we talk about Black Wings being an OTK deck. Yes, yeah, some OTK deck, if they go second into just one back row and they don't have Cosmic, right. they are done for. And Goki, yeah. I hear, plays a few traps. So, Oh, it plays, oh, it plays a few traps, <laughs> all right. And Karma Cut, speaking of how good it is in the Black Wing deck, it is devastating against the Black Wing deck, and just about everyone is playing it right now. Discarding is a much more valuable effect amongst some of these up and coming decks like noble knights and other stuff like that that are you know we're that are starting to see more play and uh yeah black wings they're a really glass cannon deck while they're very powerful super vulnerable as well so but i mean if you put money into this or a lot of time and gems into it you can still play it yeah it's been around for like a good year now untouched by the most recent ban list as well yeah so congratulations. Uh, next deck, I want to call an insect deck. Everybody calls Dark Magician an insect deck. I think this is, I would say, just as much of one. But uh, Blue Eyes somehow grabbing the first tournament victory in yes. post ban list. I'm not so sure how. But... It, right? So let's talk about it. Blue Eyes is always one of those decks for like, new ban list, whoop, whoop, new ban list, whoop, whoop, <laughs> Blue Eyes tier zero, whoop, whoop. And then... A week passes and everyone's like, uh, well, you know, Blue Eyes is not really that good of a deck, you know. Right, right. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it, Blue Eyes is not that good. Uh, brick Eyes, Brick Eyes, Brick, brick eyes. eyes. Brick Eyes, Brick yeah. Eyes. <laughs> but this is something crazy that I have not seen before. Ancient Rules is actually an insane card in this deck. It won C8 this tournament, hands down. Two Ancient Rules in the main deck, being able to special Blue Eyes from the hand they are utilizing two cards that make having blows in the hand a lot easier white stone of legend and the master with eyes of blue mm-hmm. both of those make having it in the hand very easy usually you want to bring it out from the deck or uh special summon it there from the white stone of the ancients effect but this makes it a lot easier it gives you a lot more paths to blue eyes and it gives you a lot more options with the Sage, with the Eyes of Blue, you're playing a lot more level 1 tuners as well uh, that are effect monsters that can be used for that card's effect. And all these things, you're just using them to bring them out, to instantly turn your Blue Eyes into an alternative, get the pop off, and synchro it away instantly so that you can go into whatever synchro you want. And you can see the C8 is playing one of of all these discard traps yep. and uh, ways to use Ancients in the main deck. And he utilized all of them in the first duel, it was insane. Divine Wrath, Hollow Life Barrier, Karma Cut, Ballista Squad, and Regeki Break. And the reason that you're able to play one of so all of these cards is because you are running three cards of consonants and you are also pulling a blue eyes out of your deck every time you send a stone off. So you're thinning your deck a lot. All of these tuners thin the deck, all of your spells thin the deck, and your trap utilizes the cards you get to your hands. So blue eyes has a really concise deck list right now, and uh, it's pretty good against the meta. I want to say this deck is pretty good against the Sheer Nui deck because it can remove back row, and the, you are now probably limited to only one graveyard effect per turn with Sheer Nui, and this can negate it with Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon. So even though Blue Eyes did see success at the beginning of the week and it fell off a lot, you can see later in the week, Blue Eyes not seeing much play at all. If the Sheer Nui deck does see play, Blue Eyes will be one of the decks that has a pretty good matchup against it. All right, so welcome back this week, Blue Eyes. We'll see how you do next week. Probably yeah. not very well. 
I'm excited to see, you know, if you do have blue eyes, definitely give it a shot. You are going to have to compete with that Shira Nui deck and Desperado specifically. And it's going to be tough because Desperado is a 2800 type of monster. You're going to have, have, always have a blue eyes out and you're always going to be destroying them. So you may want to play more Karma Cuts instead. Do you see that level 9 synchro he's got in there? Was it like Sky City or Cloud City? Cloud Castle. Cloud Castle. They actually used Cloud Castle to their advantage yeah. in the duel. Yeah, it's just got a really big defense, right? Like 3,000 or something, 3,300. Summon it, and then you tribute it, and then you tribute something else, and then you, you tribute like a level 8 monster, and then you summon another level 9 monster from the extra deck. Oh. So they All did right. that, and they summoned... Vermilion, it was insane. Oh, was nice. Great. Okay, yeah. well, there you go. Blue Eyes doing more than just going burr. Nice. Yeah, so... Top tier plays. All right, moving on to this last one. This is the one I think everybody was excited for, saying this is going to be a tier one deck. This is going to poop all over everybody. And that Cyber Dragon's not doing as well Cyber as Dragon. expected. Yeah, this, Cyber this Dragon. This list, look at this one. It's running six monsters now. I know one of them's a Karibo, or seven monsters. One of them's a Karibo. So this is a a, a monster heavy deck because we've seen a lot where they're just down to five monsters without a yeah, Sphere so, Karibo. You know, there was definitely a lot more play of Cyber Dragons during the beginning of the week. You can see three out of the eight top eight decks in Battle Phase Monday were Cyber Dragons, and yeah, people were like, "This is going to be one of the best decks coming out of the ban list." However. Cyber Dragons is still a glass cannon deck. But I will say that their explosive power has been increased a lot. Since mm-hmm. they uh, this list may not uh, show it specifically, but the use of multiple copies of a card like Cybernetic Fusion Support is really starting to show off the in- insane power of the deck. Usually Cyber Dragons, you're used to just seeing them uh, se- fusion summon once and winning off of that. But lately, I have seen them fusion summon a uh, cybernetic rampage dragon once or twice, then go into a cyber end dragon, then go into a chimera tech, uh, overload right. dragon, you know, by using all the materials that they have already used and banishing them, whatever. And yeah, that is probably the more, uh, the more effective route for them in this meta. It's going to take them a lot more steps to get to where they can just break a board uh, piece by piece and destroy it. But they're going to get there. You can also see this list that I'm making use of Offerings to the Doom when Cyber Dragons lack spot destruction against a monster that's straight up just higher than anything that they can destroy based on the amount of resources they have or just something that, yeah, basically they, they, they just can't run over. They can just offer exit. Well, this that... guy's running a lot of little techs in there, right? He's got Sphere Karibo, he's got Cosmic, he's got Herald, <laughs> he's got Offerings, kind of he's got kind Storm. Of you, know? you need to, to survive, you know. Yep. And when you think of just turn one plays um, to get rid of back row, you need to, before you play your Cyber Dragon core, you need to have something like Cosmic Cyclone. Or if you started with Overflow and you have Storm, you can do that and destroy one of your opponent's back row as well. Mm-hmm. Storm is also used. People have been destroying their own cybernetic overflows when they cannot use them when they're going uh, for an OTK, destroying them so that they can search cybernetic uh, cyber load fusion. That's the second effect of it. Not many people use it to their hand as well as fusion gate. Now, if you were one of those people who are questioning the cyber dragon players using dream tickets to play to fusion gate. Well, I have bad news for you. You cannot play Cyber Dragons now without two Fusion Gate. You absolutely need Fusion Gate if you're going to play this deck because you need to be able to fusion without seeing Cyber Dragon core and without hard drawing into the Cyber Load Fusion. Do you imagine going back into that box now? Oh, dear Lord. You seriously cannot, it cannot compete with the other uh, meta decks without Fusion Gate. Yeah, that's, that's rough, but... You can get your Karibos at the same time, so is it that bad? Meh, you're just going to end up with, like, a lot of cards you're not going to use. 50% gem sale in, like, uh, Four or a five month? months? A month. No, <laughs> one month for the fourth anniversary. One month. You think one so? Month. Is that a, is that a yeah. Kamel prediction? It's a Kamel confirmation. It's going to Take happen. it to the bank? Take we're going to ha- we're gonna have a, a 50% gems off sale for the... All right, the save fourth. them gems. Save them gems, guys. All right, let's do at a glance real quick. Yeah. Overall representation this week, Desperado. Look at that edging out blue eyes and cyber dragons. 
Um, yep. Again, this is a super long list. I just did the top 18 because after this, it just gets down to like four to, you know. Like, yeah, and I definitely think in representation to look for this week, definitely Desperado, Cyber Dragons, Black Wings are definitely going to be some of the top uh, performing decks. Rep- representation wise, Black Wings prove themselves in damage step. They're going to go up. Goki prove themselves as well. They're going to be fighting Shira Nui for the top spot of control, yeah. best control deck. So look out for those two decks as well. Uh, people getting in there with Beast. Witchcrafters. When we talk about yeah. Ritual Beast, man. They weren't even at the top five. They were played a lot this week. Where'd they end up? They ended up in 12th. They only got two top fours. Oh, man. They're right behind Black Wings. Unfortunate. We didn't get to talk about Magnets either. Oh, man. I guess they didn't do well either. Oh. Magnets got... Well, they won Battle Phase Friday, so they got six points. So, okay, I mean, it's a, it's a tournament victory, but... Well, we'll talk about my road decks, right? So. Right. There you go. All right, moving on to conversion rates this week. Christrons. Okay, yes. Now 15%, not bad. They they did win a tournament in a top four and a top eight. Yeah, so I mean, really they had a good quickly, week. Uh, just, just to bring it up, outside of the power rankings, uh, Christrons did do very well in tournaments o- across the first couple days of the ban list in like a couple overseas events. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, they also did win a Battle Phase Tuesday. They won. Yep. Uh, that deck with a 20 card list. So take a look at Chris Trons, man. They are not totally dead yet. In the hands no. of a competent player, they are a force to be reckoned with. All right. And then moving on, top eight finishes. Look at this Desperado with 10. Cyber mm-hmm. Dragons with nine, but a big disparity in the points between the two of them. Um, but look at Mayakashi, Karakuri, Noble Knights, Ritual of Beast, Invoked Apiria. Apiria is basically just an invoke deck where they have the Imperia is your earth. And then there's another one that does fire and Oh yeah. But that's, that's what they called it on the, on the tournament breakdown. So yeah, just another way to play invoked, uh, Bougians, ancient gears, and just water. That's what they just call anything. That's a water deck. Yeah. All right. And then moving on to most victories. What a surprise. Sheer Hanui with three. Oh, <laughs> Hopefully this will be the last week we yeah. see this. Hopefully people figure out how to beat the Shiranui deck. And I think that that's going to be with the use of cards like DD Crow. Uh, yeah. Now that Shiranui are down to just three Shiranui cards, you know exactly which cards you have to interrupt and when you have to interrupt them. Right. So the <laughs> use of... Three use Shiranui of, cards. Exactly. Only. So you have <laughs> to know. There's absolutely no way you can mess it up. Like right. before, maybe you could have banished the wrong one, messed up, you know. Oh, don't forget which one has which effects, but now you can't mess it up. Right. What are you literally gonna do? only three cards in the deck? So, DD Crow, I think, is going to be a very good card against Shira Nui. Artifact Lancey as well. If you don't want to see any problems versus Shira Nui, side in those cards for sure. All right. Let's take a look at the main list one more time and then we'll get out of here. This is the top 15. Dark Magician coming in at 15th. I think that's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> But there you go. All right, you guys, we're going to get out of here. What do you guys think of the list? What do you think is going to be uh, at the top next week? And maybe we can yeah. start actually getting some idea of what the meta is going to be. But there should be a new box coming soon, right, Kamel? Yeah, hopefully. And let us know what you guys are going to play. I hope for I hope that everyone on YouTube gets an opportunity to compete in one of these tournaments that we have on Twitch. They're a lot of fun. This week was probably one of our biggest weeks on Twitch. Everyone was so super hyped after the ban list so we mm-hmm. want it to continue so please if you have not entered a battle phase yet and you are excited because you see one of your uh decks that you have was on the list try them out in battle phase the all battle phase events are free and if you are a youtube channel member or a twitch subscriber you get guaranteed access to all battle phase events so get in there give it a shot get in the new player help channel in the discord and uh, yeah, we'll do what we have to do so you can get in a battle phase. That sounds great. And make sure to check out uh, the new player stream on Saturday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's a lot of fun, too. Well, we're going to get out of here. I'm Circus. That's Kamel. Peace out. All right. See ya.